So we're at the Internet Summit here in Raleigh, North Carolina, and I'm joined by the fabulous Anne Handley from Marketing Profs, who's just got off stage, uh, having done a fantastic session. Tell us a little bit about it, Anne. So here at the Internet Summit in Raleigh, North Carolina, I talked about creating content marketing that's bigger, braver, and bolder. Content that puts your brand or your story in a bigger context, um, and that has a bolder perspective and a braver point of view. Can you break that down a little bit into uh, the kind of takeaways or, or, or next steps people should do, having seen your talk, but also going back to their offices the next day? Yeah, I mean, I think one easy thing to do is just embrace the opportunity of content marketing and you know, really think through your bigger story. And what do I mean by that? I mean, putting your brand or your service or your company in the context of what people care about. You know, not selling uh, your features and benefits, but really thinking about why does that matter to the people you want to talk to. Um, that sounds like marketing 101, but in my experience, there's a lot of companies that still make that mistake as relates to their content marketing. One of the examples that I share, just to give you an example, is Blue Bottle Coffee. Uh, Blue Bottle Coffee is sort of um, an, the anti-Starbucks, if you will. You know, there's a, a number of smaller outlets. I mean, there's a number of, there's fewer outlets than there is um, as compared to Starbucks. But yet, they tell a really compelling story because they speak to people who really want to level up in terms of um, in terms of, of you know how they think about coffee. So they make people smarter. They essentially use their their content to train their audience. So in other words, they, they give them some insight into why it matters whether you should use a burr grinder or a blade grinder. You know, that all sounds pretty pedestrian, but to people who really care about a great cup of coffee, that's their that's their bigger story. That's the content that they create. So you mentioned a lot of companies making mistakes. What other kind of mistakes do you see? I think uh, not embracing the opportunity, number one, is, is a big mistake. So what I mean by that is just sort of doing what you're always doing. Um, I shared an example today of a brand who essentially produced a commercial, sliced it up into 15 second Instagram stories and called it social content. Um, and so that's the kind of example where I feel like, you know, that's, that's the old way of doing things. That's not really embracing what's unique about social media and where the opportunity is um, with content marketing more, more generally. Um, and you've got a book, uh, well you've got a number of books, don't you? I have two. Yeah. Two, yeah. Um, Everybody Writes. Correct. You write for Entrepreneur Magazine, you've obviously got Marketing Profs. If someone wants to start writing great content, where do they start? Because when we talk of content, we obviously mean things like video, social, images and stuff. When it actually comes down to writing, the written word, I mean, we had Ram Fiskin here earlier talking about, um, you know, the kind of content that, that his company creates. Where, where do you start with the written word and does it still matter or is it all about images and video these days? No, I mean, I think it, the written word still matters. I think writing is still the foundation of so much of the content that we're creating. I think that the written word is still the foundation of the web. And I also think that it still matters in a world like this, where you know, you're know you hearing from me on video. Uh, I shared an example of a video that was produced by the BBC. And what was beautiful about that is that it was a wordless video. Essentially, there was no, there was no narration to it. But there were words that were, you know, not being uh, appearing on the screen. So, in other words, there's sort of, ah, um, oh, man, what do you call that when there's like a ticker? Yeah, well, yeah, sort of like that. Subtitles. Subtitles. There we go. Subtitles. Um, so there were subtitles, but the writing wasn't just that. So the writing and the subtitles told a story that was beautiful. So it was a great example of telling a story with words and marrying it with video and really creating something that was a whole lot more powerful. Now that was a video that I shared from the BBC, but I think brands can easily do that as well. Really just thinking through, you know, how can we actually use words to express who we are in a, in a different way. I love how you uh, squeezed the BBC in there. It's very... <laughs> Very, very proper of you. Um, one, you know, t talking of storytelling, one thing uh, that a lot of people come to delightful for is to help them tell their personal stories through their personal brands. You've written books, you've got columns, um, you're seen as a thought leader in this industry, and I don't mean that in inverted commas because you're not, but the whole word thought leader kind of perplexes me a lot when people come to me and say, that's what we want. What's your kind of stance on that? How did you build your personal brand? How, how did you um, 
come about to be doing all these wonderful keynotes and, and speeches around the world? Huh, interesting, sto uh, interesting question. I guess, I guess the way I would answer that is just to say I didn't set out to build my personal brand. And I think that's a mistake that a lot of people make. They think I'm going to be a thought leader, you know, I'm going to go out there and want to build my personal brand. That was never my, that was never my goal, you know, and, I, and I'm like you, I'm a little bit uncomfortable by that term, you know, just thought leader just feels a little bit like, um, I don't know, it's a little bit icky. What I've always done though is just try to help marketers be better at their jobs and I've, helped, I've tried to inspire them to be better marketers, better people, and to build better businesses. And so I guess, you know, you could say that a thought leadership was, you know, sort of came around sideways, you know, um, but my first priority has always been to help marketers, to inspire them, and to really, you know, help them take advantage of the opportunity that I see with content and social. The fact that that's made me a thought leader is, you know, that's, it's nice. Um, but, you know, it, it all came about from, from a pretty sincere place of just wanting to, wanting to help others. Yeah, that, that's, that's the one thing we try and persuade people is it's not about you, actually. Yes. Yes. It's about everybody else and there has to be a value exchange there. And you've been creating a lot of value for a lot of people and been very inspiring for many years. So, yes. Anne Handley, thank you very much. Great speech. And um, Everybody Writes is on Amazon. 200 odd reviews. I just checked that out, which means you must have sold a bunch. And uh, and uh, marketing profs again, great resource for marketers out there. Thanks very much, Anne.